purpose of doing that. Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to, I'm like cut off. What is mm. happening? Let's see if we can fix this. Technical Welcome to Soul Sunday. Bye Sora, we love you. Here we go. All right. I'm gonna try to do this. Thing. Welcome to Soul Sunday. Hey guys. All right. Uh. So last week, Amy came to you with a video on cutting. Nope, was toxic kinds of love. So this week we're coming with cord cutting or cutting ties. Um, and so yeah, welcome. So we'll wait for a couple seconds here while people get on. But um, so last week, Amy talked about toxic kinds of love. So I feel like um, at this point we understand love we understand toxic love we understand self-love these are some of our february theme videos um and so this week we're going to be talking about cutting ties um feel free to leave us some comments below uh, make sure you're liking and sharing the video um and if you guys have any questions when we're done with this we will get back to comments and any messages we get so um okay so we want to start talking about like so what is even cutting ties we got some notes here i'll in front of us share our notes. sharing notes make, make sure, sure that we we're cover getting everything. it right yeah well because so we ended last week talking about what is not love um what is toxic love um and what do we romanticize that is sometimes not romantic at all and what that looks like and how to determine if you are in a situation in a relationship of some kind that is toxic um or abusive um, and so today we were talking about, okay, so I've determined that I am, what do I do next? Will you cut the ties? Um, and there are several reasons for this. The first reason that you do it is to uh, stop sustaining damage. Um, you are at a point, if you have been in a toxic relationship where you have been injured and damaged by someone and that, that damage has to stop in order for you to heal um, in order for you to um, begin the process of thriving again. Before any of that can happen, the damage has to stop happening to you. So that's the first reason that we cut the tie. Yeah, cutting ties <clears throat> is you know ending communication and, and ending the relationship itself, whether that is, and, and this doesn't just apply to, you know, cutting ties is not something that we think about with just you know, romantic relationships. This is family, this is friends, this is uh, coworkers. Um, a relationship is any connection that you have with another person um, in, in your life. And so if that becomes uh, to a level of toxicity that is damaging to you, uh, cutting ties is what needs to happen, ending communication, ending the relationship itself. Um, and if it cannot be officially like ended, we're going to talk about what that, how we navigate that as well. But really it's about setting those boundaries and putting those boundaries in place. Um, and you know, as we move through life and we are growing, we are learning, we are evolving, and as this happens, you know, we need to let go of the things that are not serving us anymore, the things that are damaging to us. And in letting go, in releasing those things, we are creating space. We are creating space for potential. We are creating space for new possibilities and for new growth. Um, and so this is a really important aspect of not just our own spiritual and emotional health, but to our own growth as a human um, to make sure that we're, you know, constantly evolving. Um, so yeah, cutting, cutting ties is um, necessary to stop the damage. Um, and then once the damage is stopped, then we move into the second phase of cutting ties, which is where we learn to help recover our energy that has been lost. This is when we begin to draw ourselves back in and we establish those healthy boundaries with this toxic relationship. Yeah, we recover our energy and um, then we reestablish our freedom, our freedom from... Um, suffering, our freedom from things that held us back because we were trying to hold on to them at any cost, our freedom from limiting ourselves in order to try to make a toxic person happy or pleased with us. Um, we, we stop the damage, we recover our energy, and then we regain freedom and the ability to pursue health, uh, evolution, um, growth, uh, joy all of these other things yeah i mean anytime we enter a relationship and it doesn't matter what relationship that is we are creating energetic cords with that person um and 
these courts are important in relationships because they really help us to establish a deeper connection with the people that we choose to be connected to. Helps us really understand one another better. Um, helps us perceive and tune into each other. But when we're coming into a space of toxicity, that can be overwhelming and that can be damaging to us. And those cards, yeah, when you're in a toxic situation, that is a cord that has only one flow of energy. It goes in one direction. Healthy relationships have um, cords or a cord that has a two-way flow of energy. It's reciprocal. Um, and that those cords are those are necessary. Those are impor those are important. Those important. are positive, right? right? There's something connecting us to another person. There's something keeping us um, close to this person. Something that that um, that makes us feel seen and loved and important. And also, it's a um, a, a cord by which energy is given and received. This helps us to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if it's toxic, that energy goes only one way. Right. And it drains you and you, or you're left empty and dry. Yeah. So cutting these energy cords, um, specifically the toxic ones are the ones that you need to release. Um, it just sort of helps you with the process of moving through the transition um, without carrying any burdens of the past. So cord cutting is designed to release, to let go so that we're not continuing to carry that baggage with us um, as we move into the future and into the other things that we want to pursue. Um, so let's talk for a second about signs of unhealthy courting. Okay, so maybe you're not really sure what we're talking about, what this might look like. So I wanted to kind of go over some examples of what we would consider, what I would consider um, symptoms almost of an unhealthy attachment, an unhealthy courting to someone. Um, so the first thing would be depleted energy. If you're around someone and you feel your energy draining, you feel like um, you're just exhausted after an exchange with this person, this can be a sign of an unhealthy attachment or an unhealthy courting. Um, if you have a heavy feeling or you feel stuck, like you don't, you can't make any movement, you're just kind of slothing along in this relationship. Stagnant. Stagnation. Um, again, signs of an unhealthy courting. Um, if you have, if you find yourself having obsessive thoughts or displaying obsessive behaviors with regards to this person or this relationship, it can indicate um, an unhealthy courting that you need to look at. Um, or compulsive coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm things to distract and numb yourself. Yes, yeah, unhealthy habits and behaviors that kind of help you distract or whatnot, those are also signs of an unhealthy courting. And last but not least would, would be in my books, actual physical illness. Mm. So if you find um, that the toxicity is so much in these relationships that will, it will actually have an effect on your physical, your Absolutely. real physical health. So mm -hmm. if you find yourself getting more sick more often um, or you have chronic stomach pains or chronic headaches, um, you might want to consider what that relationship is with the people um, that you're potentially courted to. Um, is there any other signs of unhealthy courting that you can think of? I mean, there's so many, yeah. but we only have a limited yeah. number of time today. So uh, Melissa's going to talk a little bit about energetic metaphysical ways to cut the cord. Um, and then I'm going to come back in and around and I'm going to talk about practical ways to do it. Because that's what I do. <laughs> okay, so the magic behind corn cutting is often um, in the rituals and the practice that we engage in. And so... Um, the first thing with cord cutting and the, the very most basic thing that we can begin to do is visualizations, right? So this is internalizing and visualizing the detachment of the cord, the separation, the boundary, the wall going up. Um, I know I've, I've spoken before in different videos or just maybe with you guys in person um, about, you know, shielding and, and all of that stuff. It's the same concept. We're visualizing and we're working through the cutting of the cord um, just through a visualization process, a guided meditation even. Um, you can find these online. They're pretty readily available or you can do this yourself. Um, the other thing that we can do is a ritual. And there's a number of different rituals that are very helpful for cord cutting. Um, perhaps you put someone in a jar, right? So we are deciding that we want to separate ourselves from someone or some relationship. Uh, and so we do a ritual where we are, um, in essence, banishing this person from our lives, um, banishing them from our space, not allowing them into our, uh, you know, our circle. And um, we're doing this by using a jar spell where we put, you know, uh, things that represent the person into a jar and we're sealing that jar and we're, we're saying 
that we are intentioned are to keep that person contained and away from us safe. Um, there's also freezing, right? So you can put uh, anything that's associated with the person into a bag with the intention that um, the freezer spell will uh, stop them from doing things to you, stop them from hurting you. Um, so we call this freezer magic. You just put things associated with the person into a bag with some water into your freezer. Um, we can also do actual um, you know, cord cutting where we are you know, connecting two candles together and burning them in a releasing ritual. Um, or we could even be putting them just like we do in a jar, um, sticking them into a container and burying them just to kind of get them away from our energetic space. Um, as we do with things that we don't want around us, we bury them. Um, and so these are some of the uh, ritual ways. Um, we can also journal. Journaling is a great way to do releasing. Um, Amy's, I know, is a big fan of journaling and free writing. And I just like kind words. Of, yeah, getting things off your chest. Um, so if you're a wordsmith and you enjoy um, writing and reading and, and talking and, and words are your thing, then you may find journaling is a great way to cut cords. Um, and then you can also do things like salt baths or smoke cleansings where you are literally using the visualization process or maybe using the journaling process along with traditional ways of cleansing energy, which would be you know salt baths or using incense or burn bundles, herbs, resins, and things of that nature to, to purify that connection and that relationship to help cut it. Um, and then Amy has some practical ways as well. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Something I wanted to say is this is sort of just a really brief overview of these things. Of course, Touching. if you want more information <laughs> about these things, come to the store. We have everything yeah. that you need, and we can give you all the information that you need if you feel the need to do yeah. this. Cord cutting is very personal, and it's, so it's important that the whatever ritual you're doing or whatever practical matters you're you're taking, whatever practical steps you're taking, that they are um, important and meaningful to you. Um, you know, everyone's magic is going to look a little different, so what might work for me as a cord cutting is not necessarily going to be the best thing for you. So it's really helpful to come in and talk to one of us and really talk it through and get an idea of what's going to work for you, what's meaningful for you, so that we can get you set up with the right working. Mm -hmm. But we can't just do the magic and then be like, great, now it's going to be easy. No, we have to deal with the parts of us and the things that we are doing that keep us connected to this person. We have to do the work ourselves too. And one of the things that we have to do, I mean, in terms of setting up new boundaries, we have to remove this person, not just from our energy, but physically from our space. If that means getting rid of things that remind us of them or make us feel a certain way about a moment in our lives or ourselves, um, if it means um, getting them off your social media so you're not seeing what they're doing and feeling hurt and harmed by it all of the time, if it means blocking them on your phone or just establishing a no contact, um, it is doing practical things to ensure that this person doesn't come back in or that you don't accidentally come up against something that this person is doing that's no longer our business that is going to reopen a wound that isn't fully healed yet. Um, you have to give yourself space. And the other thing that I'm going to say is if we've reached a point of toxicity with somebody that we have to cut the cord, we're talking about serious damage, toxicity and abuse. Um, that kind, that person cannot heal those behaviors quickly. Even if they start today, the moment that you cut contact with them, they are going on a long journey that is going to put them on a path where they can love people without harming them. And that means we have to let go of that, like, well, what if they change? Well, what if it's different this time? Well, what if, like, I hope that you do change. I hope that you do get better. I hope that you do heal. But... That's a very long journey, and I can't be present for it right. because I can't sustain more damage from you. Right. I think it's also important to note that they may not even go on that journey. And um, absolutely, you cutting ties and you blocking them on social media and you doing no going no contact may have zero. Uh, they may have zero awareness and take zero steps to fix themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that sort of letting go we were joking earlier when we were talking about it letting go of hope you, yeah. you literally have to let go of hope that they're right. going to change they may not that's their journey that's their choice that's their trip we have to shift the focus from that person and the hope that things will be different at some point and shift the focus to ourselves and what can I do right now what is possible for me now that wasn't possible for me before what can I do that's for me that's totally separate from this person totally separate from the possibility this is going to work it out at some point we have to take the focus from the 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 person who's harmed us to the only person who can actually make us well 
and that's ourselves. Yep. Very good. So if you guys have any questions about cutting ties, um, you want any help dealing with toxic relationships, you know where to find us. We're on Potomac Avenue in Dormont. We're on Pike Street in Cannonsburg. Um, Amy and I will see you guys later. I hope you guys really enjoyed this Soul Sunday. Um, you'll catch us every week here at 3.30, um, at least one of us. <laughs> someone will be here. Most weeks, two of us, but um, someone will be here every Sunday at 3.30. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Cheers. <laughs>